Well, good morning. Good morning, good morning. <clears throat> and it's a lovely morning. We're in March 2024. And uh, it's one of the very rare occasions when I'm driving the right car with the CCTV and the uh, the camera, you know, mounting, and the time, and nobody in the car, and possibly something of passing interest to talk about. <clears throat> so, I've had a, I did uh, record a video a few years ago when I missed uh, the deadline for re-registering with the GDC by a day, I think it is, and. Uh, and uh, just how it was that you know that if you register by December 31st then you're a fine upstanding dentist and you've got no problems at all but if you register if you re-register on January the 1st <coughs> due to an oversight then you're treated like the worst <coughs> the lowliest applicant from uh, the furthest corner of the earth to the venerated position of being a dentist and you have to start from the back of the queue you know which you know is just that's the GDC I've also recorded videos on the pernicious evil that is the statutory body the body that's set up by statute by law has got a job and and does it <coughs> irrespective of the destruction and harm that it causes, the distress, uh, just <clears throat> constantly justifying itself as by saying, well, it's the law, it's the law, it's the law. You know, it doesn't matter what, uh, what silliness occurs as a result, they just say, it's the law. And of course it's the law because their only uh, their justification for what they're doing is the law and nothing else and um, out of it they make a handsome living you know charging statutory fees requiring you to do statutory declarations etc etc and that's that's their job their job is to leverage their power given to them by the law to uh, effectively make money earn a living build an empire and the GDC is one such body they used to be called Quangos quasi autonomous non-governmental organizations uh, they're governmental organizations but the government likes to be at arm's length to them which is what gives you know that, that's why they started renaming Quangos arm's length bodies because they operated at arm's length although they don't really but let's just no we'll skip that for the time being so quasi autonomous because <clears throat> ostensibly autonomous but in fact not so only quasi autonomous so you've got a body which is supposed to be non-governmental but is in fact governmental and is supposed to be autonomous but is in fact not autonomous and that's why they came to be universally hated because they were just government by any other name um, but the government like uh, Jim Phelps in uh, Mission Impossible disavowed any knowledge of them you know that these these have set these things up and they just they just run on their own except when we tell them what to do and uh, and they're doing the uh, the work of government but they're doing it in that this way because of a certain reason for example the, the need to call the independent review body independent even though it's anything but or the need to uh, uh, pretend that local councils set the rate of council tax and because they're democratic that they are uh, you know can be voted out if the local voters don't like how much they're being taxed locally whereas in fact they is the very opposite you know the uh, tax setting powers are very 
limited and their spending powers are totally limited by uh, because the, the, the government takes the money and then gives it back to them and so they get a thing called the local government grant so so the any idea that they're autonomous again is, is just uh, uh, in name only and also there are other reasons for example supposing you don't want uh, uh, freedom of information requests a lot of a lot of pesky freedom of information requests then what you do is you make the uh, that particular area quasi autonomous non-governmental structure and then it can refuse to abide by the FOI requests which would they would have to if they were part of the government so for example the British Dental Association is not as many people suppose a trade union again I've covered this before it should be uh, and it should have elections for president and it should have elections for secretary but it never does why not well because it's although it's um, regarded as a trade union by the government and receives trade union funds intended for the smaller trade unions which the BDA I would argue are not really one of the smaller trade unions but they get funds intended for small trade unions and um, and yet they never held they never hold elections and that's because they are exempt and they are what's called a special register body and a special register body is a trade union by any other name but exempt from all the exigencies of trade union democracy and legislation brought in uh, at the request of Mrs. Thatcher to fight Arthur's gargle and the National Union of Mine Workers. <coughs> Talking of which, I had a very sad bit of news the other day. Neville Bainbridge, one of the founding members and forefathers of the General Dental Practitioners Association, passed away last year, 2023. Very close friend of mine. We were very uh, aligned on uh, uh, policy and uh, what was necessary to, you know, and a great commitment to the National Health Service and what needed to be done to sort it out. Uh, it's a bit sad, really, because uh, without fail, I go and see him every year. He lives um, in uh, Dewsbury. And uh, I used to drive up there and stay overnight and see him, and we had a nice chat. Lovely guy. And I uh, rang up this last year and said, uh, It's Neville there, you know, phoned up for a chat. And his wife said he died. So it was a bit disappointing for me, really, because I thought, you know, I did count as one of his sort of closer friends, and yet no one had seen fit to let me know that he died or tell me that there was going to be a funeral or anything. And, um, but the biggest uh, problem is I think you've got quite a lot of the records of the early GDPA, if not some of the early, I don't know, medals or plaques or whatever, you know, photographs possibly. And um, I think his wife's so embarrassed by the fact that uh, she just assumed that I would, I would find out through the grapevine, the dentist grapevine, which people assume is professionally contains about two dozen people and then we all know everything, whereas of course we didn't have any friends in common. And, uh, and I think she's, I don't know what she's done with it all. I did, I did ring several times and say that at my expense I'd be very happy to have it removed to storage to preserve the early history of the association, if nothing else. But um, she said Neville was a hoarder, which is a positive thing. Um, but she also said that, um, you know, they haven't really had time following his death to sift through all the stuff he'd hoarded. And she's just reluctant, I suppose, for very valid emotional reasons to um, let it go. Plus the fact that I made a joke about uh, if I found a second will in there, I would of course send it back. 
so I don't think she appreciated the humour. So possibly a very large, uh, large amount of uh, original material is, has been lost, really, because uh, perhaps you could say Neville failed to safeguard it by making arrangements for it, you know. But who, who really does make arrangements for their death, you know? Not to that degree, anyway. So that's uh, that's a bit of a bummer. But anyway, we've got some. I've got I've got a lot of stuff. God knows that might go in a skip. We don't have a GDPA library, not like the BDA's got a library. But then we don't have a government funding like the BDA has government funding. So perhaps if I get a chance, I'll get round to digitising it all. And then we can make the archive available, can't we, to anybody on the internet who wants to download it. The sun's very bright. Still very low in the sky, and this is the first sort of really sunny day we've had. So anyway, got a letter from the GDC uh, last week. Notice six, it says. Notice six. Like, like there's been five notices before it, but they haven't. This is just on a list of notices. Notice number six relates to failure to um, keep up with their demand for CPD. And their demand for CPD is that you do in every in any two year period, you do ten hours. So it's not the big, uh, you know, five year deadline. It's the little inter inter year deadlines. And <clears throat> which themselves are totally arbitrary. And <clears throat> I'll give you the two versions, okay? And, I, and you can let me know which version you agree with. The, the one version is that when they brought in a requirement for dentists to do 50 hours CPD, then most dentists being dentists, I'm finding it very hard to fit CPD into a, a week which is full of patients for some reason, tended to wait until the last minute and then do 50 hours in the last two weeks, which may have been by virtue of a residential course or a skiing trip or whatever, I don't know. But, but the point is that <clears throat> the argument was that it's not good for a dentist to do no CPD at all and then for two weeks every five years just to do nothing but CPD and and thereby you know scraping under the wire so what they did was they said <clears throat> we need to have this distributed more evenly because for the learning process it's better to little and often rather than you know loads of stuff that you might forget as soon as you learnt it and, and that's the academic's uh, viewpoint, all right? I mean, perfectly reasonable. When I say perfectly reasonable, I mean perfectly plausible. That's what I mean. Um, the, real, uh, the real reason was that um, the academics who dictate these sort of uh, standards of the General Dental Council um, were a bit fed up with dentists doing it like this. And they all run postgraduate centres and uh, courses, uh, things like that. And they would far rather have a large attendance on a weekly basis than a massive attendance uh, in the, the last two weeks of December. <laughs> and, no, and nobody in the postgraduate centre for the rest of the year. So what they've done is they've sort of tried to uh, spread the uh, demand out a bit so that they would all, so then from a business point of view, not that you can call postgraduate education business, it's, you know, it's all public money. Uh, but uh, anyway, just to spread out demand. Now, according to notice six, I should have done 10 hours in the last two years and I've done eight. So yes, you heard it correctly. I did one hour too few last year and one hour too few the year before. And uh, apparently I've got a notice six saying I'm gonna be struck off because of this. So that's, now you know what I'm talking about when talking about statutory bodies, okay? 
and quangos. This is this is absolute classic quango behaviour. Computer says you're two hours short, therefore cheerio. At 64 years, it's time to retrain. So, <laughs> so first of all, right? I would like to say I haven't looked into this, but you get plenty of emails telling, reminding you to revalidate, and I can't believe for a minute that I didn't revalidate. I mean, I know I revalidated, but what I'm saying is I can't believe for a minute I saw that I'd done eight hours when I should have done ten, and I pressed the button that said, yeah, that'll be all right, who's going to know? I wouldn't have done that. If they wanted ten, I'd have done ten. I'm the master of finding CPD out of nowhere, me. So, that's the first thing that's a problem. So then, so now I'm going to have to go back and see what I've declared and, and try and work out whether that was what I declared. Oh. Oh, that's a patient. That's all right. That's, um, that's um, the work phone. It's in my bag. Yeah, it's just gone 8.30. So, and then <clears throat> I'm going to have to write them some groveling letter saying, uh, I'm very sorry, uh, I found another two hours from somewhere. But they you know, but they've still got the right to say, yes, well, okay, we don't care if you found another 50 hours, Mr. Watson, you didn't declare it. And the, and the regs say, you have to declare it, and you didn't declare it, therefore, we're gonna strike you off. So, <clears throat> this one's going all the way to the High Court, by the sound of it. So, anyway, I'll let you know how I got on, but February is our busiest month, and they want to reply. They sent me um, the letter in, last week in February and they want to reply by March 24th which is a bit odd isn't it you know because when you're um, if you're struck off for not renewing by the 31st of December uh, you're told not to practice from January the 1st whereas this they're like yeah yeah we don't mind you carry on practicing for another month or so and uh, uh, no but just let us know but <laughs> You know what they say, the wheels of justice grind exceedingly slow, but they do grind exceedingly fine. And so, I'm not out of the woods on this. I'm not out of the woods on this by any means at all. So don't think, ah, oh, because they're not bothered about it, they're not bothered about it. That doesn't mean they're not bothered about it. They just mean they don't mind whether they wreck my career in February or March. It just make no difference to them. Do you know what I mean? So, anyway, we'll see how it goes. This all dates back to the time when this guy was chairman of the General Dental Council, <clears throat> and they changed the standard of proof for dentists on uh, balance of probabilities, and they changed it to beyond reasonable doubt. Oh, sorry, no, they did it the other way around. It was on, you know, you had to prove that a dentist had done something beyond reasonable doubt. And uh, and it was changed to on balance of probabilities. So all the um, General Dental Council had to do was decide whether it was more likely than not that a dentist had done something, rather than actually have any evidence that he had actually done anything. And that's on, on balance of probabilities really just a subjective thing, isn't it? It's just a lot depends on how you feel about the person you're deciding about. On, what you think that they might have done, you know, yeah, they're a wrong one. <laughs> this dentist is obviously the embodiment of evil. I could quite believe, <clears throat> to more than 51% certainty, 52% say that he's probably done, he's probably done this. You know, 52, 48, yeah, convict him. And uh, this uh, guy who's a member of the Athena Club, I remember his name, Professor something, always banging on at me to join this association or that association. And uh, Scotsman, anyway, you know who he is. And uh, I, I, um, I protested, you know, when I was in a meeting with him and I said, look, you know, dentists, because I, I was used to dealing with dentists who are in all sorts of trouble. 
And by trouble, I mean, you know, had had brain aneurysms, weren't thinking straight, were, were getting divorced, had mental health issues, all sorts of stuff like All these reasons why you can forget to renew your, uh, your uh, registration. And forgetting to renew your registration just added to the problems that they had, you know. They were going bankrupt, they were doing this. They were being had up for speeding. They were, they were, I dealt with all these guys and the General Dental Council dealt, dealt with none of this. They were membership department, they were just like, uh, he said, uh, Nan, Nan was his name, wasn't it? Yeah. Nan said, look, these guys, he said, they've all got golf club memberships, which we didn't, I know I never have. He said, they've all got golf club memberships, he said, and if they get their golf club membership in a day late, then they're, they're slung out of the golf club. He said, there's no reason why the General Dental Council shouldn't be the same. This is in the days when you had one option, which was to pay in a lump sum, you couldn't pay monthly or anything. They didn't, they didn't do any of the um, things that, <clears throat> as normal consumers, we expected to help us make payments, such as instalments or uh, paying quarterly or anything like that. So, um, yeah, he was the Nen Wilson. He was the architect of that and, and of the change to the balance of probability. Probably pretty um, malign effect on how everything worked, I think. But then the General Dental Council has, has been a basket case for a long time. Mind you, if you're watching this from the General Dental Council and you're considering my, my uh, heinous crime of missing two hours CPD in the last two years, uh, I think the General Dental Council is a fine, upstanding organisation and, uh, and a credit to the profession and long may it continue. So, <clears throat> but that was about the time that uh, that Celia, what's her name, the idiot who was in charge of... Um, there are a lot of delinquent fathers not paying child support. So the government set up an agency called the Child Support Agency. And the idea was that uh, it would chase up all these delinquent fathers and put a sequestration order on their income so that these poor mothers would, and they are poor mothers, you know, would, would get the money. And in fact, what happened was, basically all the fathers ganged up and joined the giant Annoy the CSA club and uh, found a way to frustrate everything by just miring the whole administration of the thing down in repeated requests for information and, um, and notifications of changes in earnings. You know, they were just about, they would get this poor wife would just about get an order saying that her husband's got to pay something. And the husband would say, oh, actually last week I, I was stopped five pounds because I broke a mug. And so uh, I'd like to appeal. And then <laughs> they would then have a three month appeal which turned into a two-year appeal, because then everybody did it. And so, uh, <clears throat> I don't know whether it had any impact on it at all, the uh, situation. But if anything, it probably made it easier to not pay your child support. But my point is that the woman who oversaw the setting up of that fiasco uh, was um, eventually sacked and relocated to the General Dental Council because um, I, I don't know whether they thought it, it was a it was a you know a backwater where she couldn't do any further damage but if so it's unlucky for us because it's always possible to do further damage isn't it look at the NHS dentistry it doesn't matter how bad it is it's always possible to make it worse right okay nice to talk to you I'll see you soon bye